this window is the character controls. By default, if you just have a, a skeletal mesh in your scene, like this guy, uh, it may look like this. Uh, so nothing uh, ready yet for you to, to work with, but uh, this is where you start from when you want to characterize a character, so create a control rig for your character. And once your character is uh, ready and, and set up, you'll see uh, this GUI with the animation picker. So here are the, like, you can see there are two panels, controls and definition. So controls is actually what an animator is gonna interact with and definition is uh, what a tech animator would set up. So it's uh, the result of the characterization. And on the top, you have character versus source. So character is if you have several characters in the scene. So I don't know, male one, uh, Jean-Pierre, uh, T-Rex two, whatever. And then you have the source, which is what is this character being driven by? So when you see uh, like the, the third option is the control rig um, that you created. So it's actually driven by the red and, and yellow uh, uh, statement here, which is the HIK rig. And if you turn that source off, so if you turn it to none, you actually have the, the row skeleton. So just the uh, FK data. So you can check that you plotted your animation to your skeleton properly before exporting, for example. I can also select my character in the navigator and actually uh, tick ac active source or untick it. Right. So I switch between the skeleton and control rig. And in the blue box, you have some options like uh, load character animation. So you can load uh, an animation directly from another motion builder scene and directly retarget it to your character. You have the bake uh, options, so plot to skeleton or plot to control rig. So here I'm uh, using my control rig, I'm animating an animation here. And if I jump to the source none, I see nothing, right? So here I don't have any animation on my on my uh, character. So if I'm in control rig mode, I can go to big plot to skeleton. Now it's actually baked onto the skeleton. And I could actually do it on multiple takes at the same time. So it's very similar to uh, the, the animation drop down plot selected all properties option. <clears throat> and vice versa, if I if I import an animation and I don't have any uh, keys on my control rig and the animation is only on the skeleton, I can go in and big plot to control rig. So it's the other way around, right? Now, if I edit my animation to control rig, so let's say I create an animation layer, I put it to uh, override mode, and let's say I want to reduce the intensity of that whole animation, I can just put a key at the very beginning on my A pose and I can maybe reduce the intensity of that layer. So let's say I want to reduce the animation 50%. So now I might have less, uh, less intensity than before. So this is before, this is now. I'll, I'll make it a bit stronger so you see the difference. 80% reducing. Uh, if I want to apply and bake that change to the whole body. Uh, this used to work, like you used to be able to just say bake plot control rig here, so you plot the control rig to itself. Uh, for some reason it doesn't work since a few versions of Machine Builder, and this is why you need to select at least one object in the character, stay in full body uh, selection mode, and then uh, go to animation drop down and plot here. And now my key has disappeared from the, the anim layer. I can and if I disable that layer, I don't see any difference. That's because my animation has been baked onto the, the base layer. So to switch from skeleton to control rig, you can bake here, or you can select your entire uh, like skeleton hierarchy. You can hold space and right click to select uh, an object in its entire hierarchy in the schematic view. So here I just select one object, and here I select its whole hierarchy, and I could uh, plot that if I want. 
through the drop down plot. Now if I come back to the, the skeleton, I can see that I actually plotted that, that new intensity, the new edit. So you can select your entire uh, character, but you can also go into sub views for the fingers, the hands, and the feet as well. Uh, mine is actually uh, customized. I changed the background image to show uh, RH and LH, right hand, left hand. This way I never get wrong with the right and left because this is from the front view. So if you work on a character, uh, like a player character, for example, you work from the back, uh, when you select here on the left of the viewport, you're actually selecting on the right of the picker, right? And here I also customized the UI to have a direct access to the fingertips, which is faster than going uh, into the hand sub view every single time. Let's look at the little icons here. So you can toggle on and off uh, the visibility of the IK effectors or the FK controllers. Or you can also display the bones even though you're still in source uh, control rig. So if you need to check something without switching, or if you want to select a bone, you can display it here. Then you have the character mode, uh, so full body to control the entire body at once. Uh, you have a body part only. You can see that the body part uh, that you select is highlighted here. Then you have selection mode, which is just um, object by object. So back in uh, full body or body part mode, you can activate the pinning for translation, for rotation independently. And you can ignore the pinning temporarily with this release all pinning. And you can also toggle your stance pose, which is like a zero key on the entire body or just a body part. In the character controls, if you don't have anything selected and you click um, in an empty space, you will select all the objects in that view. That works for the sub views as well. Uh, if you want to select multiple objects, you can hold control. Though in the viewport, if you want to add to selection, it's uh, shift. Uh, because in the GUI, if you hold shift and click, for example, on the limb, you will select uh, all the IK effectors of that limb. You can do that on multiple limbs. In the GUI, uh, you may also see some extra spheres here. Uh, those are auxiliary effectors. So you can create those auxiliary effectors by right-clicking on a Nike effector, uh, create auxiliary effectors. And those are useful if you want to uh, do some uh, space switching. So temporarily parent a hand to a weapon or uh, temporarily parent the feet to uh, the root control or uh, a snowboard, for example, and in the viewport, those will appear as uh, squares. All right, so if you want to drive the foot with that auxiliary factor now, you want to remove the IK line of the foot and actually have the effector driving. What I don't like with those cubes by default is that it's hard to select the uh, actual effector underneath. So I tend to change it, its aspect here, the look, make it a hard cross maybe, uh, increase its size. So now you can easily select either the effector or the foot itself. A character is made of a control rig for the main body. So head, spine, pelvis, uh, both legs, both arms and fingers. But you can also add character extensions. Uh, so here I have one for my root bone and other uh, controls that are parented to the, the roots. Um, I have uh, 
some for my weapon controls as well that are burnt into the hands, etc.